Is a GTA 4 remaster or at least a port going to be released this year? It's very possible, although I'm more tending to believe that it will be a port. But let's start from the beginning. In July 2022, Tez2 posted on Twitter that, as per a reliable source with clear accuracy on Rockstar plans, remasters of GTA 4 and RDR1 were on the table a few years ago. But Rockstar chose not to proceed with the projects in mind. The poor reception of the Trilogy Definitive Edition might be a reason behind that decision. Since that post was published, there was silence on the subject for several months, even over a year. Then, unexpectedly last year, Rockstar Games finally announced a new Red Dead Redemption project. And while the GTA 4 remaster or port has not been announced yet, there is some evidence to suggest that such a project exists and could be releasing by March 2024. Rockstar Games' parent company Take-Two previously indicated that it had two re-releases on deck to launch by that exact month. One of these games was the aforementioned original Red Dead Redemption, so it stands to reason that the other could very well be GTA 4. Of course, of course, it could be a completely different project, entirely unrelated to the Grand Theft Auto franchise, so we should keep that in mind. But this wouldn't be the first time that there have been rumblings about a GTA 4 re-release or remaster. But returning to the RDR1 port for a moment, unfortunately, it wasn't the news fans were hoping for. Instead of a full remake or remaster, the developer revealed that it was releasing a Red Dead Redemption port with no new content. When people hear about a remaster or remake, they immediately think of incredible graphics improvements, higher resolution, better quality textures, amazing graphical effects, ray tracing, and so on. But no. According to many, this game also needs significant improvements regarding inconsistencies in the story. In 2018, Red Dead Redemption 2 was released to stores and digital storefronts worldwide. The game was a prequel to the first and told the story of what happened to the Vander Linda gang and what drove John Marston away from it. The problem is that this caused some story inconsistencies with the first Red Dead Redemption game, where major characters like Arthur Morgan were never mentioned. And when it turned out that all we would get from Rockstar was a port, it became clear that the franchise will never address these elements. Why did Rockstar decide on a port instead of actually improving the game, which was already 13 years old? There are several possible reasons. Rumors of a Red Dead Redemption, remake or remaster, have been around since 2021 and continued to persist until the summer of 2023. Whether a remake was ever seriously being considered as a project has yet to be confirmed, but it is likely that some of the more recent rumors were misunderstandings about the port project. It's been speculated that the remake or remaster of the game may have been cancelled due to the poor reception of GTA the Trilogy, the definitive edition. It may also be that the developer wanted to put more of its resources into the development of GTA 6. And speaking of GTA 6, in December, we finally got the long-awaited trailer for the upcoming GTA, and a huge disappointment was the sight of the 2025 release date announced at its end. The year 2024 seems to be the perfect moment to release some game under the GTA name to keep that franchise alive, and that's why this year seems to be the perfect time to release at least a port of GTA 4. Almost everyone who played GTA 4 knows how much the game has aged despite the fact that when it was released over 15 years ago in 2008, it was far ahead of its time. From the very beginning, there were many performance issues, particularly with the PC version, which to this day is considered the worst optimized game from Rockstar Games. It's somewhat ironic, because despite the performance issues, this game is considered one of the best entries in the Grand Theft Auto series. It's unknown what caused such poor optimization of the game by the the studio for PC, and even a series of patches was not able to fix this. So it seems that the problem is quite serious. GTA 4 was originally designed for Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 consoles, which had completely different hardware architectures than typical PCs. Porting the game to PC required significant modifications, but it seems that not all of these changes were made appropriately, and the game was built on the Rage engine, which was quite advanced and complex for its time. This complexity made it challenging to optimize the game for the wide range of PC hardware available, unlike consoles which have standardized hardware. At the time of its release, GTA 4 had very high hardware requirements. Many players did not have computers powerful enough to smoothly run the game, partly due to unoptimized code. But the game also suffered from performance problems even on high-end PCs. It had issues with how it utilized PC hardware resources, including poor management of CPU and GPU usage, leading to performance bottlenecks even on powerful systems. There is also the problem of z -Fi which causes textures to overlap each other, and a huge differences between the PC and console versions of the game, like missing or broken graphical effects. Fortunately, modders were able to fix most of these problems, and in a short time, we are able to remove most of the issues that plague the PC version of GTA 4. TJGM made a video on this topic, and I highly recommend it to those who want to play GTA 4 on PC, but are afraid of performance issues. The link will be in the description down below. What else might indicate that a GTA 4 remaster 
disaster or port is actually in the works. Firstly, back in September 2022, Take-Two Interactive, the parent company of Rockstar Games, took down a fan-made mod for GTA 4 known as the Definitive Edition. This was a collection of mods and fan-made patches aimed at significantly improving the look and feel of the 15-year-old game on PC. Based on information from the author's website, the project of remastering games with mods began in 2016 with a mod pack for GTA Vice City called Reborn and has since grown to include mods for GTA 3, San Andreas, Chinatown Wars, and other Rockstar games like Bully and the Warriors. The group behind the project confirmed that Mediafire, where their files were uploaded, had received a DMCA takedown notice, presumably from Rockstar or its parent company Take-Two Interactive. This notice required the removal of the Definitive Edition project from their website. In a tweet, the Definitive Edition project stated, I knew this day was coming. Here we are with a DMCA by Rockstar, I assume, on our GTA 4 Definitive Edition patch. Well, I suppose we need to remove all GTA 4 related stuff from the website. Interestingly, as far as I know, only the GTA 4 mod was targeted in the takedown. The site's original trilogy mods are still safe for now, but the project didn't sound too confident in those mods remaining available for long. Just enjoy it when you still can, they wrote. This isn't the first time Take-Two Interactive has taken action against mods. They have a history of being quite protective of their properties and have been known to take down mods in the past. The company made similar moves prior to announcing its own definitive edition of the original GTA trilogy, which, despite its problematic release, still managed to be a profitable project. Many want Rockstar Games to release a remastered version of the title, like this studio did with the trilogy. Xbox One and Series X and S users can play GTA 4 via these consoles' backward compatibility feature, but those on PS4 and PS5 cannot do the same. And if it indeed turns out that Rockstar decides not just to release a port, but also to make changes to the game, there are a few things that could be improved in GTA 4. The first of these is graphics. This may seem obvious, as graphics are the first visible change a remaster has over the original game. However, there are more than just graphical improvements that GTA 4 would have needed. Please, don't hate me for this, but I gotta say, the original game with that weird yellow filter that made everything seem much more dull than it originally was, looked pretty bad. This yellow tint used to be a mainstay of the late 2000s and 2010s, and whenever a video game used this feature, it was often criticized. It made little sense for an open-world game to use this sort of filter, and as many graphics mods for the PC version of GTA 4 have proved, Liberty City didn't lose its grimy feel without this filter. For a glimpse of what a GTA 4 remaster could look like, we can look at the Ice Enhancer 4 graphics mod. This mod is a fan-made graphics overhaul for GTA 4, developed over several years by a talented modder named Haysom Kilani. His aim was to maximize the game's graphics, creating a visual experience experience far beyond the original. However, those who liked the yellow filter in the game might not appreciate this mod. If Rockstar decided to stay close to the original and kept the color scheme of the original game, it would be good to at least to refresh the environmental textures, as they have aged significantly. The resolution of these textures is quite low and noticeably outdated. Next, one of the most meme-worthy aspects of GTA 4 is when Roman calls Nico to go bowling. This is an irritating feature, where Nico's friends frequently call him to hang out, which can be distracting, especially during missions or while exploring the open world. Nico, it's your cousin. You want to shoot some pool? Shit, Roman. I can't talk now. Damn. Rejecting them lowers the relationship with that friend, affecting specific benefits they offer. GTA 5 resolved this issue by making hanging out with friends more convenient. Introducing new friend activities in a remastered version would be a welcome addition. Then there's the issue of clothing and customization. The options for Nico's attire in GTA 4 are quite limited. Notably, the game lacks the iconic fingerless gloves featured in the promotional art and trailers. A remaster could address this, especially since the community expressed disappointment over its absence. Additionally, hairstyles were planned, but not included in the game, as evidenced by barbershops found in the game files. A remaster could expand clothing options and include hairstyle changes, similar to the customization available in GTA Online. Also, unlike GTA San Andreas or GTA 5, GTA 4 lacks car customization. Players can only change their vehicle's primary color randomly at a pay and spray. While this wasn't a significant issue in GTA 3 or Vice City, it feels like an oversight in a more modern title like GTA 4. 
4, a remaster could introduce more extensive vehicle customization options. The Grand Theft Auto games have always been centered around vehicles, and customizing them only makes it much more immersive. In fact, obtaining new and rare cars is frequently regarded as the most appealing aspect of GTA Online. A remaster could drastically improve GTA 4 by this one feature alone. Even though Rockstar Games has been focusing on their newer projects, it's interesting to note that GTA 4 has not been completely left in the dust by them. In fact, the game has been receiving updates, although sporadically, even after all these years since its initial release in 2008. One of the most recent updates to GTA 4 was released in 2023, catching many fans by surprise. This update was primarily a security update, aimed at protecting the game's source code from potential leaks. Not long after Rockstar Games released the GTA 4 Complete Edition on Steam and their launcher back in March 2020, they removed the multiplayer aspects of the game. This makes this security patch an interesting one, given there are no active official multiplayer components. So this move was likely a response to a security breach that occurred previously, where a hacker managed to infiltrate Rockstar's security system and leak the pre-alpha version footages of the much-anticipated GTA 6. You see, while Rockstar's current plan is to get GTA 6 out the door, I think that a GTA 4 remaster isn't entirely out of scope. I truly believe something regarding GTA 4 is going to happen this year, and if not, it could still happen in the future, after GTA 6 ships, so there's still hope. 2028 will mark the 20th anniversary of GTA 4. It's a long wait, I know but it could be worth it if Rockstar decides to give GTA 4 the remaster treatment it deserves. It's worth noting that the gaming industry is always evolving, and Rockstar is known for pushing the boundaries with each new release. By the time a potential GTA 4 remaster rolls around, we could be looking at a game that not only improves upon the original, but also takes advantage of the latest advancements in gaming technology.